Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So today I am going to be talking to you all about Monstera, my Monstera, sort of walk through um, the ones I've got and how I care for them. So I don't have uh, many Monstera, I am trying to slowly grow my collection. Um, one are so expensive and can't buy them straight away. So my first ever Monstera that I got was Monstera Deliciosa. Bought this when I was in my first year of uni, so that was five years ago now, um, and he has gotten so big. When I first bought him, um, I don't think I have a photo to show you, but he was really small. He had about five leaves. Bought him from home base. Um, he's lush. It is this guy back here. He is so big now. I will insert some footage um, of actually how big he is because he doesn't usually live here. Um, but when he's back in situ, I will take a little video to show you. He is getting so big. He is almost as tall as me. He is currently putting out new leaf as well so hopefully by the end of summer he's gonna be so much taller i can't wait so i'll insert a video now and show you how big he is i love him he is my absolute favorite plant this monstera deliciosa um he has gone through so many moves as i said i've had him for about five six years now um, I got him when I was in my first year of university, um, so he lived in halls with me. And then I moved back home, took him back home with me, moved back to uni for my second year, he moved there with me. He then moved back home, went back to uni for the third year, and then moved back home again. I then moved in um with my mum for a few months um so then he had to be moved to my mum's house and now he lives in my flat now so he has gone through so many moves actually surprised he's you know as big as he is and he didn't stop growing because of all the stress but yeah he they are so hardy it just goes to show like he has gone through so many moves and like most of the moves from probably second year he was already quite large and he was on a moss pole so he was just led down in the bottom of my calf all the moves so yeah they're really hardy they're so easy to look after i would completely recommend these as beginner plants so um so care for this one i would say obviously they're so easy um they will tolerate darker areas and i say tolerate because if you do have a room in your house that is a bit darker and you're not sure what to put there these can be okay and um, they will tolerate it they don't like it but they will tolerate it they won't grow as big um they'll be very slow growers they won't give you as many big leaves and the fenestrations that you really want in your monstera so you can do it i wouldn't recommend it if you want it to grow really big you need to give them a good amount of light i've had this one in so many different positions i've had it in a darker area um and i did notice it didn't grow as much i have also had it in really bright indirect light so that means the light it's getting is really bright but you don't have those rays of sun on the leaves all the time for most plants this is a complete no-no it will burn the it will burn the leaves and your plant really won't like it um but with mine um as it's gotten older it seems to tolerate i say tolerate it quite likes it i guess um I have it in front of, well I used to have it, I don't have it anymore, um, so last summer I had it in front of my living room window right next to it and from about one o'clock until six o'clock in the afternoon like the, the rays of sun are coming straight in that window and it seemed to really like it. Last summer I got so many new leaves off of it so I don't know, some people are going to disagree with that and say that's a big no-no, but I've not personally not had any problems with it, seem to really like it. Um, but again, like I always say, you know, it's it's down to your plant and obviously it depends where you live, it depends whether you've got really strong sunlight. I mean, I'm in England, I don't 
it just depends where you live on your plan and your preferences I mean you can try it pull it away from the window and then slowly move it forward if you want I know other people who have got them on stairs my sister for instance both of hers are straight on the window ledges and whenever I see her on FaceTime or go around there there's always new leaves coming out so I don't know it's just an experiment really you've just got to see what's best for you and your plants so that's sunlight for this guy um, watering I let them completely dry out um, until I water them I've got a moisture meter so I will stick it all the way through and when it says dry I will wait until it's on the lowest 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 of the dry section um, and then I will soak it all the way through. Um, it, I do that with quite a lot of my plants. I tend not to water them when they're still moist just because I really want to avoid root rot. I've always found it's better to underwater them than overwater them. So yeah, that's how I water mine. I mean, I water most of my plants like that. Um, it's down to you, you've got to work out. I mean, I would never say there's like once a week or twice a week or once a month because each each plant is different. Um, it depends on the pot size as well. I mean, obviously when this guy was um, smaller, he was in a much smaller pot and he would dry out a lot quicker. Now he is in a really big pot. Um, so, there's a lot more soil in there and it's a bigger pot. It takes so much longer for it to dry out. I mean, over winter, I think I didn't water this guy for about three months at one point. Um, now I'm watering him like maybe once a month, maybe once every month and a half, two months. It depends really. I'll just, every time I'm going around checking my plants, I'll stick the moisture meter in there and see what it's like. I'll wait until it's bone dry and then soak him through. Um, yeah, there's not a set sort of how many times a week it just depends for beginners especially I would 100% recommend moisture meters because it can be quite hard to work out when you need to water your plants um, especially as a beginner it can be a bit confusing I always go by let them dry out every time so moisture meter I don't have mine with me now but you just stick it in the soil and it has a gauge and it tells you if it's wet moist or dry I wait for most of my plants just wait for it to be bone dry like with this monstera and it, it's absolutely fine I tend to find when it's putting out new leaves it will um, dry out a lot quicker so yeah I just check it every time I'm going around my plants uh, maybe once a week every yeah just see if it's moist or not so that's watering propagating these guys are so easy I mean everybody will tell you it's so obvious to see where the node is and they have all these aerial roots I mean my airy roots are going down and touching the floor now I've had most of them I've stuck back in the pot because otherwise they're just training all over the floor um, so that helps as well you've always got those aerial roots and they will start off the growth I have propagated this guy and I do it in water um, as with most of my propagations um, just because I like to see the roots grow so much fun so yeah that sort of name for the Deliciosa um, I would also recommend maybe once a month cleaning down the leaves because the leaves are so big you know they collect a lot of dust so yes that's sort of the basics I'm not going to go into massive detail today just sort of a basic for beginners I guess and on Deliciosas again I will show you this guy who has been <laughs> a pain to say the least I got him maybe last June as a cutting and he was absolutely fine when he arrived um, although it was in a heat wave a massive heat wave um, and when they got here he was so limp and he just didn't look happy he was obviously really thirsty the seller was so good though posted it first class sign for and it literally got here in a day it was just because it was so hot that that weekend that I think it struggled a little bit but I put him in water and he bounced back he was absolutely fine um I left him in water until 
um, the, I had a substantial root system basically um, and I thought he'd be happy um, being potted up. I think with this guy I made some mistakes, um, this is like the first expensive plant I've bought um, and I'm sure other people have done this, like when you get a plant that you've been wanting for ages you sort of over care for it and then that's your downfall. Um, I did loads of research on how to look after these variegated monsteras and there was all this stuff and I thought oh it needs to dry out really quick I'll put it in a terracotta pot. Most of my, no, I think I've got one plant in a terracotta pot and that's it. All of mine are in plastic nursery pots and, and then a cover pot. So I think that's my first downfall because I wasn't used to it. Um, I'll explain what happened after all of this. Um, so that was the first thing. Second thing, I did put it in a really chunky mix, but I think I gave it too big of a pot. I think I was expecting it to be like the Deliciosa standard and it would just, the root system would just grow loads and it would fill out that pot really quick. And I saw it was struggling and I took it out of the terracotta pot and the root system hadn't grown that much so I think it was a mixture of putting it in this terracotta pot which I'm not used to terracotta pots at all and giving it too much space. It's best to not give it too much space, um, best to put it in a smaller pot just because it helps it to dry out quicker and all of that jazz you can really shock them if you put them in too big of a pot um so i think that's my two downfalls with this one um another thing that i think caused the issue which i'll tell you about in a minute um was i went away for a, a long weekend and you know i live on my own in a one bed flat and i thought oh, i'll be fine like this was in october november i thought oh, i'll be fine i won't bother putting my heating on i've got electric heaters so if they're on they're on all the time and i thought oh it'll be fine like, i'll get heat from downstairs the plants will be fine i came back it was like six degrees in the flat it was so cold and i think this guy suffered from that as well um so as you can see here i've just got this really really random little stem um so this was a top cutting when i bought it um and you could see like in here it did have um it did have a leaf forming in there um and nothing really happened and then one day i was looking at it and then i noticed like when this was in it had like you, know, you, you get like the fleshy leafy bit that goes over the leaf that's forming underneath that was going like black and i peeled that back and it was fine like, i just took that off and it was fine underneath so i thought oh it's fine like no like don't need to worry about this um it kept getting worse like every morning i'd get up and i'd see it and it got to a point where it got to like so far up and you could see the leaf that had formed inside was just black and oh, i'll insert a picture i was heartbroken because for about a month before i was going thinking to myself oh it's going to push it out soon it's going to push it out soon and then it was just black so i did a little bit of surgery and i cut it open took the brown mushy bit out and left the bit of the stalk which is fine um here and i repotted it there wasn't any sign of sort of root rot but i think it was a mixture of all those things like shock from transport and then shock from too much space in that pot um me not being used to terracotta pots and then it just getting way too cold i think it was a whole mixture of all of that and yes so he seems fine now um luckily the rot only got to a point where um you can sort of, sort of see where the leaf is will come out and it's stopped just before that so i'm hoping this summer a leaf will come out of this stalk i really hope i really hope because this guy's not done anything um he just keeps browning on me i mean he's slowed down a lot since i've um repotted him i put him in more of a brighter area as well and he seems to be doing a little bit better we will see this guy has just been very annoying i would really recommend um especially if you're a beginner with these like i am 
never had one of these variegated ones before get one that's more mottled in variegation and not these big big trunks because thing with the variegated monsteras the white don't have i really hope i'm explaining this right because if i'm not it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be bad but i'm pretty sure it's because the white doesn't produce the chlorophyll the green does so the white bits um they can't sustain themselves and they will just die off so it is inevitable but it's really annoying um they look beautiful but it's always better to get the more mottled ones like it is up here um next time i get one i really really want a tiny constellation next but yeah i would recommend that this guy I used to, uh, this guy I now I've realised that you just don't over care for them, they don't need it, they're pretty much the same as the um, standard Deliciosa, I just let him completely dry out between waterings, gave him a really chunky mix um, in a smaller pot, gave him a moss pole to keep himself up because he kept like toppling over um, and yeah just give them this one I make sure I give it in bright but indirect light I don't let the sun light get onto the leaves um, for more than half an hour just because the white will burn and I really don't want it to burn so it's always best to just give it really bright like the indirect and like I found with the normal Deliciosa so yeah that is this guy um i'm sure there'll be updates on him he's not done anything in the almost year i've had him but we'll just wait and see hopefully he's got over the shock now and he will do something because i really love this guy and it was like the first plant i spent a decent amount of money on so do something please so the other monsteras that i've got are um adinsonii so if you don't know what they are they are these guys they're the ones with the really beautiful um leaves with all of the holes in i love these guys especially when they get really big leaves um they are beautiful so with these guys they can be a little bit finicky and I know a lot of other people have said this as well. Um, yeah, I know a lot of other people have said this as well. Um, I've got quite a few. Um, I've got, how many have I got? Three? Uh, yeah, three. I did have four, but um, the one I just showed you, I potted two up in one to make a really nice bushy plant. Um, I've got them all growing in different ways. I always find if I've got multiples of one plant, I like to grow them differently, like one trailing or one climbing, one really bushy, one like a bit leggy and like stringy. Like I like to see the different ways they grow and they can look really nice in all these different ways in different settings. Yeah, I like to... Oh, it's a bit, like, a bit like a nutter, don't I, sometimes? <laughs> I just really like to see all the different ways they can grow and just jungle everywhere. So, anyway, I've really gone off track. So, with this guy, um, I let them dry out between waterings, but not too much. Um, for me, they're a bit finicky with our watering. If you leave it too late, the leaves will start going... Um, yellow if you water them too often the leaves will start going yellow um, so I just use my moisture meter and when it's just got into the dry stage um, I might leave it a day or two and then give it a water I soak them all the way through um, I don't let them get stay too wet so in the winter I hardly ever water this because it doesn't need it it just doesn't need it it's not using it's just not used in all the water it's really dark it's cold they're not growing they're not using that water so I back right off in the winter just leave them to it um so that's water with the lighting situation I would say they don't like um direct sunlight they will bleach and burn um i have i had my um sort of plant shelving unit right next to the window over winter 
spring has now sprung and the sun comes just straight in onto them. I've been closing the curtain um, to try and, I've got like a sheer curtain in front of them to sort of try and model that sun so it's not directly on the leaves. Um, but I just really need to move the shelf because it's too close to the window now. But um, I have found that the leaves on the one by the window are burning. I'll insert a little bit of a clip. You'll be able to see they're like going a bit yellow, a little bit bleached out. Um, so try not to give them too much direct sun. A little bit is fine, um, but not for too long and not very often. I just set them back from the window a bit so it's bright light but indirect. And these guys i find if you have them in a dark area obviously the leaves are going to grow in small that's just the way it is if you have them trailing down your leaves are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller if you have them growing up the leaves will get bigger but yeah when the leaves get big they are beautiful i have got one um it's coming now in the living room i'll insert a clip as well oh, the leaf it's coming and it's huge it's like the size of my palm and oh, so beautiful I'll insert a video now and I just look at it it's so beautiful I can't um so yes um what else with these guys yeah temperatures they don't like it too cold I think it's because the leaves are so thin they're like paper thin obviously on the deliciosa the leaves are really thick so they deal with the cold better with the adinsoniae the leaves are so thin if you feel them they're like paper um and obviously they've got the holes they don't have that much surface area and i think they get too cold and they just don't like it so i would completely recommend keeping these away from cold drafts or if you've got a cold room avoid putting it in that room um they love humidity so if you've got a humidifier or a space in your house or your flat that is really humid i would try putting it in there mine have really responded to humidity and they do grow loads so i think that's every i've probably missed sank out and i'll probably remember after i've stopped filming and think oh no i forgot to say that if i have i will insert it either in the comments or in the end of the video um but yeah monstera are oh, they're just i love them and they're one of my favorite plants um there's so many more i want to get like i said i want to get the thai constellation i love that plant it's so beautiful the variegation on it it's like oh the speckles are oh, they're beautiful i can't wait to get one one day and a monstera stanliana am i saying that right Stan sorry you'll probably know i'm on about uh, i've been <laughs> been sitting looking at how much they are and I've seen some for really cheap and I'm really tempted to get one because they are beautiful they've got they're like thin leaves and they climb or trail and they've got oh, this beautiful white variegation on there some of it's like oh I want one I want one so we'll see I'm this summer I'll probably I am selling some of my plants at the moment so the money I make off of those I might get some more of the ones that I really want now because obviously your style changes like when I first started it was all succulents and cacti and I still have some of those and I still love them but there's some plants that you just don't want anymore and you're just sort of like you like them at the time and now you there's you've got so many you just need to you know rotate them out and give them away I like to give mine to like friends and family when I propagate or you know if I just am fed up of a plant I'll give it away or I'll try and sell it um but yeah so I always tend to do that just get rid of the old ones that you're kind of not that into anymore and then get ones that you from that money you just get ones that you really really want then um and then you don't get too many as well you need to get rid of some sometimes people need I, people need to hear this you need to get rid of plants to get more sometimes because it gets to a point where there's too many <laughs> Um, anyway, so I think I'm going to wrap this video up now because I'm blabbing. Um, but yeah, so this, these are my Monsteras that I own and my experiences with them. Um, everybody will have different um, experiences with them because people have different environments and live in different places. So yeah, just if anybody's got any tips and tricks, especially for this guy, he is the burden of my life. But I love him so much and I hate him so much. 
Um, yeah, if anybody has any tips for me, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to chat to you and discuss. Um, so yes, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Let me know in the like and dislike. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these planty videos. So thank you so much, you guys, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.